Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to another episode of Shouting Into The Void, probably coming at you later in the day, the time, we're recording this a bit later, because we are busy boys this weekend. Yeah. But what can you do, that's the natural, that's the natural path of life, it's fine. Um, yeah, this is a weekly show where we just go through episodes of Doctor Who, and um, we start with 2005, Doctor Who, New Who. Um, we've already done series one, now we're on series two. We're on series two, episode R3. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I had to think now, I thought we've only done a couple. <laughs> it is a school reunion, uh, which sees the Doctor and Rose called back to Earth to investigate a school, which has been getting some really good um, results, really. And it turns out there's somebody else investigating the school. Uh, a certain Sarah Jane Smith, who, as I'm sure other Doctor Who fans know, is a classic Who companion, um, making her debut in New Who, which I'm sure is a welcome addition to everyone watching. Um, so we'll just get right into it. What did you think of the episode? I bloody loved it. It was very good. Um, coming at it, now I'm a lot older, I can pick apart <laughs> Credit Thane's plan, which I'll get on to. Um, but yeah. Obviously, a lot of it, I think, is nostalgia-driven. And if you didn't have, like, the Sarah Jane element, it would just be, like, a fun story with bats in the school, which is still fine. It still probably would have been fun. Um, but just adding that extra level, I think, really elevates it. Uh, I think all the performances are really good. The emotional heart that they can kind of explore with having a past companion back um, is really great. Um, for the most part, I really enjoy the villains as well. Very good and campy. Um, and yeah, it's just very enjoyable from start to finish and a fun little adventure, I would say, that sets up even more years of nostalgia with spin-offs. Yeah, yep. this is the beginning of the spin-offs, I think. Um, yeah, I would pretty much agree. It's a very fun episode. Um, it's probably one of my favourites of Series 2, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I mean, there, I had some issues with it. Um, some things haven't aged as well as, as they could have. Um, but overall, the addition of Sarah Jane and K9, I think, really elevated the episode for me. Um, Affirmative. And a couple of performances from some of the guest cast as well, I think, was, was you know, I mean, again, the whole, the whole dynamic between everyone, especially towards the end of the episode when they were focused on stopping the Krillotanes was better, I think. Mm. Um, and something that we don't see very often in the show. Um, but as with every episode, we, we go through our best parts and our worst parts. We try to pick three of each. Um, naturally, sometimes we have more bests and worsts, and we also tend to rip into episodes more than we do phrase them. But uh, <laughs> what can you do? Um, but we will start with our positives of the episode. So what is your first? Elizabeth Sladen slash Sarah Jane Smith. Um there's always been something very warm and wholesome, I think, about her on screen. Um, and I think that's true in the classic series as well. But I, I just liked her presence in this one. Um, the fact that they can explore a companion being left behind and like having to readjust to life after you travel with the Doctor. It's not something they really explore that often. And I thought it was a really cool idea. Um, so I love them doing that. And I just feel like Elizabeth and David together, they, I think they really sell the weight of that history between them, even though obviously those two have never actually worked together before. Um, you, re- they, you really do get a feeling like these two have known each other for years and years and they've kind of, you know, their paths have crossed again and that provides a lot of emotional weight throughout the entire episode and the very emotional ending. And um, yeah, I just really love having Sarah Jane on the show. She's such a great character. If you're going to bring back any classic companion, I think it had to be Sarah Jane. Um, because she was kind of the blueprint for how you do it after you know she kind of appeared. Um, so yeah, the comparisons between like what her life with the Doctor is like, what Rose's life is like, and should Rose stay with the Doctor, all of that jazz. Um, and then like the two Smiths in the episode, so one of them still joins the TARDIS anyway. Everything with that, it, it was intended to be a one-off, so I feel like it provides a lot of good closure to the story that you didn't necessarily need to give, but was very wholesome. I mean, Elizabeth was kind of great throughout Um, But also because she was so good, it gave her a spin-off. So I just thought Elizabeth was fantastic and Sarah Jane is a great character to have in here. Yeah, Sarah Jane's also on my best lists. Um, 
yeah purely for literally what you said you know she was a, a breath of fresh air i thought in the episode and it really ties together classic who and new who in, in a way that hadn't been done i don't think as explicitly before mm-hmm. um obviously we had the autons and the dialects and that come back but that's kind of not the same you know it, it could still be a soft reboot of those villains to have an actual character crossover i think really helps bridge the two and yeah you're right you know I didn't think at one point I was like, oh yeah, this is the doctor meeting a new companion. I was like, this is the doctor reuniting with an old friend. It's not the 10th doctor and somebody new. Mm. Um, and that's, and you can see that, especially I think David Tennant helped sell that with um, his first scene with Sarah Jane in the, um, in the, in the office where, where she's introduced to the teachers. Yeah. And um, he's trying very hard not to give his position away until he just thinks, oh, well, fuck it. <laughs> she's yeah. seen the TARDIS now, never mind. Yeah, and I don't, I don't feel like an actor who plays the Doctor has to have watched the show when they were younger. Mm-hmm. But for an episode like this, it really did help that yeah. David Tennant literally grew up watching Sarah Jane. So it, I think that really helped him sell it as well. Yeah, 100%. And um, yeah, just the acting from Sarah Jane, you know, the I've put in my notes sort of the reveal of the TARDIS and her reaction to that and the Doctor at the end. When the music um, stops, just she looks at him. Yeah, it's, it's it's great. And then I also like the fact that Sarah Jane sort of, she gets her answers for why he left and then she like doesn't press. She's like, okay, fine. You know, mm-hmm. you have whatever, fine, we'll move on. And I think that says a lot about her character as well, that she won't hold that grudge. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it, it very much felt like she was a classic Who companion that could take things in a stride compared to the newer companions we've seen that, you know, might question things a little bit more. Mm. Um, but again, that I think that comes just because she's an older older companion, both in the sense of she's old and she was in all, <laughs> all episodes. Um, yeah, and I just think that she really helps the episode. If if she wasn't in the episode, I think I don't think I'd rate it as highly as I do. No, um, purely because it just would have been another run of the mill filler episode. But the fact that she's in it sort of gives it the extra edge. I think the extra layer. Mm. But yeah, so what was your second positive point uh, Anthony Head as Mr Finch I love that man <laughs> um, even more so because Giles obviously mm-hmm. I, I didn't know he was Giles when I first watched this it was like the first time I really saw him in mm-hmm. um, but I just love he just goes ham he's so dedicated <laughs> to it I could watch that man <laughs> scream like a bat <laughs> all day long <laughs> literally at nothing like a tin dog and CGI creatures he's like ah! hilarious um and yeah i think it's also while it can be very dramatic and ott but i think that works um he does have like those quieter moments i mean he's like just watching over people and he does that little head tilt that's kind of creepy and the opening scene where he eats the little girl um (laughs) eats the child or thin (laughs) child just the way he says all that and (laughs) the scene with him and the doctor in the swimming pool Mm -hmm. you know everything with that i feel like that scene in particular Mm -hmm. Anthony Head and David Tennant together, I, I feel like that's a very different and unique Tenth Doctor villain energy that I don't think mm. has come before or is since. Um, there's just something really different and unique about it. Because um, obviously he he wants to be a god, mm. I feel like, and that's kind of his goal. In a way, I feel like the Doctor is a god but doesn't want to be and kind of rejects that idea. So I think mm. it's a very interesting matchup of Doctor and villain. Um, but yeah, he just, he screams like a bat. He's great. And a really fun, um, campy, but also kind of creepy one-off villain. I really enjoyed his performance. He's on my list too. God, oh my we are goodness. really lining up this series, aren't we? Um, what is going on? Yeah, effectively everything you just said. I think he's just like, he can flip between being that sinister man by the side of the pool and watching over everyone to screaming at cgi bats um, <laughs> oh i love and it bashing his arm into the wall to rip out the fire the fire alarm you bad dog exactly it's it's he the, like and it works though i never thought i never thought like either side of those was out of character for the no for the for the character mm. it made sense and um he gets so close to sort of bringing the doctor on side like mm. towards the end when he's like hey you could you could bring back your people you could stop the wars you could have sarah jane with you the whole time and the doctor's so close to joining him it just takes sarah jane to sort of ground him and bring it back yeah um 
yeah part of me is like i wish he would come back like maybe not the character but definitely the actor but i obviously mm. it's quite hard to to put him in a new role but yeah um, if he was like very like makeup heavy or cgi thing that could work, yeah I suppose. But, um you know as you mentioned you know he's very sort of you feel like him and the doctor are sort of on level terms which is a kind of dynamic you only tend to get with the doctor and the master mm. um but this does feel like he is a villain that could do serious damage to the world rather than as as with most one-off villains they tend to be oh they're only hurting a city or something like that yeah but this very much feels like if he was to win there would be massive consequences um and i think it helps that anthony head is the the figurehead of uh of the bad guys because he's obviously he's known for his sci-fi roots and he is a very good actor you know dramatic actor in the first place um so he just lends a level of of gravitas to the role and to the show i think in this episode that again if he wasn't in it it could be another absorber off type thing where <laughs> where yeah. it, it doesn't work very well it could be another simon Pegg where you kind of think yeah he's a good actor but he's not sort of it doesn't you don't feel threatened by him yeah um but yeah i think he was very well cast in this i think it's a shame that he's only been in one episode in theory, you could still do a, a Margaret Blaine and say he teleported away right at the, right at the moment yeah. or whatever. Um, he rebuilt himself or something yeah. else. Um, and I enjoyed all of his exposition to the Doctor to explain who the Quillotain are. Normally exposition scenes are pretty whatever. Um, but when they're around the pool, I enjoyed the, the dynamic between the two of them. And I think it, that's what sold it, really. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so Anthony heads up both of our seconds. So what is your Good third? God. Uh, the ending scene where the Doctor and Sarah Jane say goodbye, the canine reveal, everything with that. Um, again, if that had been any other compact, well, I was doing research on this. Out of the classic series, only four companions were like left behind. Everyone else like died or left of their own accord. Oh. Um, so that narrows it down, this type of thing that you could explore <laughs> with them anyway, I suppose. Um, but the fact that it's Sarah and... Um, you know, she was kind of dealing with never getting a proper goodbye with him and life without him. The fact that they can like make amends and she makes him say goodbye. Mm. It's like, yeah. I mean, it's extra sad, obviously, because Elizabeth Slade and Sally are no longer with us. Mm-hmm. Um, and they use that goodbye scene in like the tribute video they made to her, the BBC, which was rude. Um, <laughs> so yeah, just that whole scene when they kind of bid farewell, they invite her along. She's like, nah, bitch. Um, she tells right. Rose to stay though. <laughs> Some things are worth getting your heart broken for in nine episodes. Um, and uh, yeah, I just love everything with that. And then while that's kind of bittersweet, watching the TARDIS leave her again, but then the canine revealed that he's been rebuilt. And it's just a very heartwarming ending to the episode, I think. Um, even if it's kind of, you know, all these teachers that have been murdered in a school, it's just blown up and they're like, yay, yay. all happy and fine. <laughs> they can deal with all those murders. Um but yeah, it's a very emotional, heartwarming ending. Very earned, I think, from mm. Sarah being in the classic series. Um, and again, it's not at the time that they really know it, but it sets up Sojourn Adventures, which was a big part of my childhood. So again, nostalgia. Just a really lovely way of ending the episode. Yeah, you can tell that uh, they wanted this to be sort of the end of her story. They didn't plan on bringing her back, I don't think, in this. Mm. Um, because it does feel... Well, I mean, maybe. Because part of me thinks the sort of epilogue feels slightly tacked on to the end because it's just the way it transitions from the school to that weird courtyard. It's like, oh, oh okay, I guess yeah. we're here now. Um, but it does feel like it's the end and they've got a happy ending for them. Um, whereas, you know, if they just sort of let her be like, okay, hey, see you next time, bye, then, you know, there's opportunity. But the fact that they sort of said, yeah, we're leaving, goodbye, see you never. <laughs> I'm done now, yeah. see ya. Um, although they do hint that more might be coming because she tells K9 they have work to do, but it's established earlier in the episode that she's already been doing this. Yeah, which anyway. is a nice throwback to how the classic series ended. Oh, and ended. <laughs> Was well, it did end. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree that that is a, a very emotional scene that I think works in the context of if it was... If it was a different companion, I don't know if it would have worked so well, but it's the nostalgia mm. factor plays in heavily. And again, as you mentioned, David Tennant's sort of knowledge of classic Q, I think also helps sell that a lot more. Yeah. Um, so my third isn't quite the same, but it is Ooh. K9. 
Yeah, I had a feeling it was going to be K9. <laughs> um, I was so tempted to put Sarah Jane and K9 as one, but I figured I they, they, did. they do enough separately, I think, to to not put them together. Yeah. Um, I I I was lucky enough, I think, to have one of the K9's toys that you could get that the thing popped off and you could uh, the little remote control one. Um, so he's always been a favourite since this episode. Um, I'm gutted he doesn't. Oh, hang get... on, can I go and get something? Oh yeah, go on, go do it. It's your boy. And as if by magic, that's the one Yay! I was talking about. There he is. The brand new one. Oh no, I've broken him. Oh, Whatever no. will I do? <laughs> um, yeah, I had one of them and that was, you know, it's just something strange about a robot dog that is so wholesome that everyone just gravitates towards. Um, and he My is... precious son. He is the most wholesome boy in this as well. Like, <laughs> is. um it's just because we haven't had this. I don't think we've had this because he's obviously he's the companion, but we've not had this type of companion yet. You know, we've mm. not had a robot in New Who. Yeah. Um, or at least a friendly robot. Um, yeah. And to have this one, I think, added, again, another layer, another link to Classic Who. Um, the fact that he recognises the Doctor straight away in the Doctor's already like, yeah. oh, my God, I love you. Um, and then his sacrifice at the end as well is, like, heartbreaking. Um, because like it's a robot, you don't think that that they'll have the emotion towards it, but the sort of like the confirmation that he knows he's going to die is just like, oh, yeah. okay, okay then. Um, I love the uh, we are in a car scene as well. Yes, and that and that is iconic. It's just I I just find it so funny because he's 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 like so smart, but he just does it with like a weird sass that isn't sass. It's just the fact that he's just so blunt all the time but it comes mm. across with such personality yeah. um i think it's credit to the people that originally created him in classic who um and i think he does a great job coming back in this one um unfortunately it's like what one of the only two times we see him in new who he does make a cameo in series four i think yeah um but unfortunately that's it we don't see it and even in sarah jane adventures we we barely see him yeah it's, i think the props just so hard to work with he just can't have yeah. too much to do but sadly. hey maybe we'll be getting that canine tv show or movie that might be coming be making that was supposed to come out like, i mean it was already a ago. tv show we don't want to talk about that <laughs> yeah but there was a there was supposed to be like a canine versus omega movie wasn't there yeah it was supposed to be like canine the new adventures and then they were like or they said we're gonna make a canine movie and then they change it to we're going to make a series and then a movie. But that I think last we heard of that was 2019. So naturally, 2020 probably put a lot of that on hold. What a shame. If they, if they were ever going to make it. What a devastating boss. <laughs> um, but yeah, the canine in that looked disgusting anyway. So yeah. I think we're okay. Um, yeah, canine was just one of the best points in this episode. I just I just love the introduction of him, the dynamic he adds to the to the team. Best even boy. if Even if most of the time he just spends sat still. There's only like one moment where he moves around, um, yeah. and then he just he help he just helps. I mean he he's not a very powerful dog at this point. He you know he's not he doesn't have his full capacity. That's why he can only like kill one Krillitane to start with <laughs> with his lasers, and and then the shooty dog thing must be forgotten. <laughs> yeah, and then um, yeah, I love that he plays a key part in the sort of destruction of the Krillitanes, even if. Um, the doctor didn't wait to make sure everybody was out of the school before blowing up. But uh, oh yeah, because <laughs> well, like, time was running short. I know, I, Boss I was genocide in, again. He's already done. I was in that scene. I was like, right, he sent Mickey, but he doesn't know the kids and Mickey are out of the school. Yeah, I, I thought that. <laughs> so he's yeah. just like, he's like, okay, K9, bye. Let's hope they're out. Yeah, um, but that's fine. Yeah, K9 does his job. He's the best boy, and I'm so glad that he rebuilt him somehow in i don't know what the time difference is between the end of the school bit in the courtyard surely it's only a matter of hours um yeah. but maybe and in my head canon i'll say that the 10th doctor actually built it over the course of series two and then went back and dropped it off behind the tardis and then yeah just, he could just go away for the next time can yeah you? <laughs> um because obviously he doesn't say hey i built you a new canine he just leaves it there and this it's a cute moment where it turns yeah. off with sarah um, but yeah, did you have any other sort of best points before we move on? Um, I think that was all the key ones that I had. Oh boy. Um, I want to give a special mention to the music in this episode, um, purely because I think it's iconic. 
um the music that's played during the when the kids are trying to do the skaters paradigm is just stuck in my head constantly oh, oh, oh. yeah yeah and it, that's I, good. I always i always hear it and it's just it's just amazing um yeah i thought the music really helped in this episode even like um when sarah was at the tardis and the music builds to see the doctor i think excellent choices um yeah. but yeah i guess we'll move on to the worst then Mm. Uh, so, what is your first negative? The Clear Tain's plan's kind of dumb. <laughs> or, what? for time reasons, maybe script reasons, I don't know, um, it was kind of unexplained, some aspects of it. Mm. Um, when Kenny discovers one of them, like that teacher, like, <laughs> eating on the desk, why don't you just kill Kenny? This isn't why your class, like, Kenny. Off you go and tell everyone else then, Kenny. See <laughs> yeah. ya. That seemed like a bit of an oversight. Um, I suppose they could have just killed everyone as soon as they arrived, but maybe that would have been a bit too suspicious because then they, you know, they could have just done whatever the hell they wanted. It doesn't matter. Um, it would have been cool to see maybe, like, where's this oil from? Would have been nice. Because um, it's just there and it's kind of a key to defeating them. Um, but still. And it's their own oil. It's their oil. I don't want to think about it coming well, from them, though. What's it for? You know, <laughs> it's their oil. They're allergic it, to what, their own what, oil. Well, that's a terrible plan. Well, keep it around then. Keep it somewhere else. Own oil. Um, what else? Uh, oh, the actual skaters paradigm mm -hmm. thing. What does it do? <laughs> They're like, when we crack this code, we have the building blocks. Okay, cool. But what does that mean? Maths. What, what, what then? <laughs> like, how does that change the world? Maybe a bit more of that could have been fun. Mm -hmm. um, they were defeated by unplugging the... Oh, I love <laughs> that, though. <laughs> I think that's the best plot I don't, twist ever. I don't mind that because it's quite funny, but it's still just tied into this point where the yeah. plan's a bit dumb. Um, and then the Crudetain kind of attacking them when they're at the calf, uh -huh. and Rose is like, "What they do that for? Why do they just fly away? Well, we never find out why. Though. We never find yeah. out what what that reason was." Because Rose actually them. asked the question, and we just like yeah. just don't ask the question. Just like, "Oh God, they're scary." Yes, that's part a bit weird. Um, <laughs> But yeah, there was just a few things like that. I was like, uh, yeah, that's fair. I yeah. understand. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I, I don't, I get their plan. They've clearly got this like program that if they crack the code to, they can control matter, I guess. Um, Somehow. But I mean, fine. It, again, it's a sci-fi show. They explained what it could do. So I just accept it. I'm like, I don't need to know the ins and outs, the intricate details of all of the different, maths that are involved to somehow create I matter do. from nothing um that was fine um and yeah you, you mentioned that they just unplug the computers um i i was i thought oh before, and um when yeah. when he unplugs it suddenly all their headphones on the kids are just gone <laughs> and it cuts back to them oh, which dear. i think is very funny um i i thought before the episode i was like i wonder if the doctor says go and unplug them because I was like, that would be funny if he said unplug and then he unplugs. And he does. He does say, um, get the kids unplugged and out of the school. Yeah, imagine <laughs> that like, just oh. killed the kids. <laughs> I know. And then it just, it just, it's just such a funny way to stop them. I was like, that's just, just pulling the plug out. Not even, it would have been much better if they just flicked the switch off, I think, <laughs> rather than pull the plug out. Um, oh yeah, that's true. But, but got to be dramatic. Dramatic, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then everything explodes because all the, the wires are just, I guess that's what happens if you unplug an extension lead, everything just sparks. I guess so. Um, but yeah, yeah. And, and they have to use the oil to make the kids smart. So like, why go to the school in the first place? Why not just, just force feed these people, just some people oil to make, I don't know. Mm. Um, oh, I guess it's, they were like, oh, they need to take their souls. But I'm like. Yeah, maybe because they need, they need it to be kids. Maybe a school is just the best environment to have loads of kids grouped together, yeah, I guess. Yeah, maybe. Um, but I do like the fact that they sort of infiltrated them. Although what I don't like is how come, if they replace the whole kitchen staff, why did they hire Rose? Yeah. Like, sh I, I get the teachers, because half the teachers are, are still normal humans and half are glutane. But Rose literally says, oh, yeah, they replaced half the kitchen staff. I'm like, so how... Yeah. how why would they have hired you then? Yeah, it's fine. Just, she does just, that. Just for the fun, yeah, just for the funny scene of her dishing out chips to the doctor, I guess, is what they needed that for. Yeah. It doesn't make sense if you're an alien race to A be hiring people 
Mm. Um, uh, unless maybe they didn't invade their HR department and therefore they don't have any control yeah, over Yeah, the that. whole deal was they were trying <laughs> to replace people. Yeah, yeah, so, and I don't know. And then the, just to have one person come in and be like, yeah, they're human and normal, it's fine. Maybe they didn't have another Krillotain that wanted to be a dinner lady. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, and they do explain that they're allergic to their own oil because they've changed too many times or whatever. Um, yeah, I like that idea. I think that's cool. But but put a lid on your bat. Don't don't yeah, wheel just... it about with without the lid on. Yeah. Um yeah, it's it's not a great plan, but I can see what they were trying to do. Yes. Um, like with most episodes of Doctor Who, why would you do that that way? But okay. <laughs> that happens if, like again with the werewolf last last week. Why would they do it this way? It doesn't yeah. make sense. I must say the monk's plan was so much worse than this. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Um, so my first negative of the episode is the child actors. Um, I think it, it didn't get off to a great start with Milo. Uh, I got some start. good fun facts about Milo. Oh, I'm sure he was. I'm sure he's great. I'm sure he's a nice kid. I'm sure he like won it in a competition, whatever. Um, but Milo wasn't great. Kenny's not that great. Uh, They've taken all the children. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Help! Help! Can't help! Um, and then that is it, Melissa, the kid, the other, the, the girl, the other one that gets speaking lines. Kenny, Kenny blew up the school. Oh Kenny, yeah, her. She's also not great. Um, and I get it. You're in a school. You just need to hire a load of kids. And they probably actually went to that school, and they just <laughs> needed the extras. Um, so it's fine, but just it's always hit and miss with child actors um and unfortunately i think most of this was a miss yeah if you're gonna have kids in doctor who put them in a gas mask yeah and don't give them any speaking roles <laughs> um and uh, i don't because sometimes you can argue that kids not being good able to act adds to the fact that they're kids in a school but it it just doesn't it just doesn't work mm. it's just not kenny to be fair has some good facial reactions but he can yeah, i don't mind kenny can't. He can't, he can't fine. act very well. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, and it just, uh, just it's again, it's school, but then at the same time, Wortley Road was going on, so they clearly have child actors that can act, but they're probably mm. more expensive than, uh, than the ones probably. that they got in this. Um, but it's fine. It's only one episode. We don't have child actors again. I don't think really in this. Oh, no, we have Fear Her. <laughs> maybe maybe child actors will come up again who knows um i, I feel like i've pinpointed something wrong with series <laughs> two yeah yeah um yeah but i can accept it because it's part of the school saying there needs to be kids there and naturally not every kid's going to be a great actor so yeah. i'll allow it um so yeah what was your next negative point um as much as i like the idea in the scene i feel like the doctor being tempted to like join Finch and all that. I thought it was just way too quick and glossed over. And like, it's just sort of in like less than a minute. I'm like, did that even need to be in there? Mm -hmm. um, just because they did this whole thing. Next time we meet, you will join with me. I promise you. Yep. Um, but then when it comes down to that, it's like, yeah, I'm fine. Maybe not. I, don't, I just don't, I didn't buy the doctor being that tempted that quickly. Mm -hmm. And then it was just, you know, a very nice speech from Sever, granted. Yeah. Um, but yeah. It was just a bit too quick. I think that scene just needed to be a bit longer. Maybe, you know, what does Rose think about this as well? And everything like that. I think it's a good idea and yeah. it could have worked. I just don't think maybe there was enough time in the episode to actually give that scene the room to breathe it needed. Yeah, I was thinking, because obviously we went into we went into town the other day and we were like um, thinking about, we saw the Time Lord Victorious Blu-ray that had a list of load of episodes. And I thought I was watching that scene and I was thinking this could have been a, a good one to put in for that. Because I think yeah. this is showing that he's tempted to to change reality and change things. Um, it would make more sense to include School Reunion than The Runaway Bride, which they do include. Um, mm. But but yeah, I do think that they bigged up his change a bit too much. Um, although I like that Sarah was the voice of reason. Um, yeah. And I can see why he would have been tempted. Um, maybe sort of seeing Sarah Jane and seeing how old she got maybe triggered something in him that thought, oh my God, I could, yeah. I could bring all these people I've lost back, um, you know, all my old companions and things like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's fine, I guess. I don't mind it too much, but 
Yeah. At least, at least what we, do you mind too much? I do mind uh, Rose versus Sarah Jane. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I I just don't. I don't it's I such don't, an easy route to take. Yeah, it feels very much. Uh, it feels very much like these are the only two women in the episode. We must have them argue over the man. Um, yeah. And I get, you know, I get that maybe you'd be annoyed that. Oh, I, no, I know. You know what? No, I don't get why you'd be annoyed because even if it's a relationship, you you have to expect that somebody has exes. You can't expect yeah. that they've been single the whole time, up until they meet you. Because um, yeah. even Rose, we know Rose has exes because it's whatever the the other guy she was with at school. It's every man in series one. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, maybe she's not used to it because Mickey probably doesn't have any exes. So, and we see mm. what she gets like when he gets a semi-girlfriend in Boomtown. Um, and when he wants to join the TARDIS in this one. Yes, and that one. Um, but yeah, I just think it was it was lazy. It was unnecessary. I think it it, it made Sarah Jane look bad as well because I think she like starts a little bit of it as well. And I'm like, this is unnecessary. Yeah, it's aggressive on both of their parts, I think. I was like, Rose obviously has a bad reaction to start with. But then Sarah Jane's like, oh yeah, you they pro- you probably didn't know that. You probably weren't still, you were still in school or whatever. I'm like, why are you being just stop and i'm glad that they resolve it although it's it takes most of the episode for them to do that um and i'm glad that they sort of become friends by the end but unnecessary i think it just wasn't it just didn't make me feel good <laughs> i was just watching it like yeah. please please stop i don't need this um yeah because like the scene with them at the end when she's like you know find me if you ever need to mm. which is lovely like we could have had those kind of scenes throughout the whole episode instead of just saying, yeah they could angry. have been helping each other and I and do... like later on when um, Donna and Martha just get on it's so much better yeah 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 exactly and maybe they've learned from this maybe that was why they did that there um, yeah. and admittedly I do like that they end up laughing at the doctor at his yeah. expense towards mm. the end I like that but I just don't like the fact that we had to have them be against each other mm-hmm. because it very much felt like. It felt like they were putting classic Who fans against new Who fans with who are you backing, Rose or Sarah Jane? Um, and it was unnecessary, I think, um, for that inclusion. But I guess you've got to make the runtime and give the characters something to do, I guess. It can't just be the Doctor and Anthony Head <laughs> wandering yeah. around. Um, so, yeah, that, that was my sort of second bit. So what was your your third and the worst part? Yeah. You see, I struggled to come up with any, okay? Uh-huh. Um, Nina's scream at the start is clearly not a little girl scream. It's clearly a grown woman screaming. Yeah, yeah. It's like of all the sounds you could have used, surely you've got like a child screaming at some point. Yeah, and that's just my nitpicky one. <laughs> maybe, maybe it, it's too. It expensive. really like took me by surprise. Took me out of it. It's like that is not a little girl <laughs> screaming. Like that is like a thirty-year-old woman screaming. Mickey does a better young girl scream. Exactly. Just ever... Copy and paste that. It would have worked better, genuinely. Oh, but yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Not what yeah. I would have thought, but fine. I, I didn't, I didn't pick that out. Um, I it's was too testament busy. to how good the episode is. <laughs> yeah, I was too busy thinking. Surely somebody at the ho- at the home would miss her. Surely somebody would notice the child's not come back from school. You think? Um, but I don't know. Maybe that's some kind of deep commentary on the uh, <laughs> on the foster system in the UK that I'm unaware of. Maybe. Um, uh, my my sort of third worst thing, I guess, ties into my last one. It's Rose, I think. I don't like her in this episode. What? <laughs> what a um, shocking revelation. Obviously, the Sarah Jane versus Rose thing didn't help. Um, yeah. But I just think she's, again, it's back to, like, the Christmas invasion point of, ah, oh, she's so reliant on the Doctor. She's so like, oh, what are you going to do without me? You know, I'll, you know, I'm, she effectively puts herself in, I am the doctor's everything, and therefore he should only focus on me. Um, yeah, and, she does make it about herself again, isn't she? And that like, is Sarah um, Jane's there pouring her heart out. Yeah, and that's left behind. And then she's like, "What's going to happen to me, you, though? You're leave me alone. <laughs> Let's have a big confrontation outside yeah. this cafe." And she never thinks for once that yeah, the doctor is like a nine hundred. He's told you he's nine hundred years old. You cannot live to nine hundred years old, Rose. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> he's going to meet other people. Um, just. I don't know, maybe, again, maybe it ties into the fact that she's supposed to be like 20 at this point and she might not have figured it out, but just like, just think about it. Of course he's going to have met other people. He's going to keep meeting people because he's, and as he told her, you know, you're going to die at some point. Foreshadowing for the end of the series. 
Um, but and he has to keep going on. And like it does get to a point where she's like in series four, she's like, no, you can't, you know, you need to keep going on and stuff like that, whatever. But it just just she just makes this whole thing about Sarah Jane just so much like it's a personal attack on her that he's like he met and travelled with Sarah Jane 30, 40 years ago purely to spite Rose. Um <laughs> And I just and, I, and and Mickey like points out like you know it's it's fair that he has other people. Of course, he's going to have exes, um, exes, because yeah, he's a he's a nine hundred year old man. He's he's not going to be around the same time you are. Um, and she does, I think, get that at the end. Although it's still, and I hate that she doesn't like that Mickey wants to come along. <laughs> That yeah. bothers me as well. I'm like, what do you want from this man? Oh, and she's fine with it in the next one anyway. Like, yeah, and then she's then the, deal. yeah, then they're just fine and happy and whatever in the next one. And to be it. fair, that's because they didn't give um Stephen Moffat the script for school reunion in time. So he was just like, Oh, I'm sure Rose is just fine with it. <laughs> yeah, but maybe, but I mean it would have been fine either way. She wouldn't have had I I thank God that they wouldn't have had a whole episode of Yeah, that would have Ugh. That would have been the worst. Um, but yeah, it's, it's as if she got used to Sarah Jane sort of being there, and now that she's gone and they have to replace her with Mickey, she's like, oh, no way, I didn't want this. You I can't flirt with, with the Doctor when yeah, he's here. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, I think this is the first episode of Series 3 where I've thought Rose has been one of the worst parts. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that's purely down to the fact that she's still so selfish when it comes to the doctor yeah it also doesn't have this she was so good in the last one and it's just even yeah. more obvious now yeah exactly because i mean she's been pretty good in in she was pretty good in christmas invasion pretty good in new earth uh for what scene she was in and yeah last week as well and she's i think pretty good in next week's as well mm-hmm. um maybe they need to show flaws in their characters some way and the only way they can show a flaw in rose is jealousy <laughs> maybe um yeah, so that's my sort of third negative. Um, I don't think we we stuck on the negatives for as long this time around. That must be a must be a something. Yeah, we really new. went to town on the monks last week. Yes, yeah, that's what that's what did it. Um, did you have any other sort of negative points that were um, on the outskirts? No, not really. I did kind of struggle, hence my uh, Nina yeah, scream one. Yeah, I guess. Um, I'll go through sort of my my notes quickly. Um, yeah, I've put Milo's a nerd. <laughs> Again, if they're all eating the chips, why is it only he that can answer the questions? And then, oh, yeah, that's true. Speaking with the chips, Kenny says he's not eating the food because he's not allowed or whatever. But then Anthony had tell Sarah Jane that the meals are compulsory. Mm. So how is Kenny not eating the food? What um, a rebel! I know, right? Torchwood gets a brief mention, obviously, when Mickey's hacking and trying to hack into the computer. Um, yeah, I put Sarah Jane is unnecessarily harsh. I do like the disorientating camera angles when they're like yeah. tilted every now and then. Some of the some of the direction on this episode is pretty good. Yeah, the shot um, of the Crillitane night like, in front of the moon is cool. Yeah, I did. There was some slight issues. I thought the Crillitane was a bit dodgy when it comes to their CGI. Yeah. Um, but then when they like all transformed in that corridor, I was like, oh no, that's a pretty cool effect to have them like actually transform because sometimes we don't see that happened for a monster because it's too expensive and they just cut yeah. into a shadow or whatever. Oh, there was one really funny thing. I don't know why they even needed to CGI it, but when the critters are chasing them into like the big like cafeteria place or something, and they like run through and like shut the doors behind them, and, like some of the critters trying to barge in, mm-hmm. then one of the critters just in the corner is like running up the stairs, like going completely <laughs> the wrong way. I was like, what? What are you doing? That was weird. That's, that's not right. Um, yeah, that's fair enough. Um, what what kind of school has a pool? As a kid, it, An always, expensive one. it always boggled my mind that this school had a swimming pool in it. It just never made sense for me. I was like, how can they, they have, like, because I don't know where this is set. I assume London somewhere, if Sarah Jane's involved. because I think it's London, London yeah. Um, so how does a London school have a swimming pool, when if you consider how many schools there are there? Um, but fine, I guess they just needed a setting that wasn't a corridor or a cafeteria or a school classroom. Yeah. So they just went for Well, it. there's a fun fact there. Oh. It was supposed to be set in a gymnasium, but they thought a swimming pool would be more effective. So they used that instead. Sure. I, I, okay. 
I guess. Um, yeah, and I mentioned Ten had no idea that Mickey and the children were out. <laughs> That's <laughs> hilarious. I love that one. Um, and yeah, it was a strange transition from the they've blown up the school. Sorry for losing your robot dog. To oh, it's a nice sunny day and we're in a courtyard. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay then. Um, yeah, new canine and then the my Sarah Jane was also pretty uh, heartbreaking. Um, but yeah, so what are your fun facts? Oh, let's find out once I move canine out of the way. Bye, bye canine. Bye canine. See you in many many weeks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, this is the first episode that actually confirms the revival is a direct continuation of the classic series and not a reboot, because it was speculated that it was just a reboot because of like yeah. series one, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that shut up that side of the fandom. You know, even though that he, well, I suppose maybe he wasn't called the Ninth Doctor in two thousand and five. Maybe he was just the Doctor. No, he was just the Doctor. Sadly, <laughs> um, the working title for this episode was Black Ops, <laughs> because. Okay. This is originally um, written by an unnamed writer. They haven't revealed who it was, probably mm. because, yeah. Um, set at an army base, uh-huh. um, which went against the specification of it needing to be set at a school. <laughs> um, they then admitted maybe writing Doctor Who wasn't for them. So they gave it to Toby Whithouse, who didn't have m- much time at all to rewrite yeah. it and set it in a school. So <laughs> had to hurry a few things along. Yeah. Which is, uh, there's a lot of production issues with this series. Maybe which I Doctor think Who maybe wasn't why for I'm, them. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like they're just like maybe writing for his, maybe you, for maybe you should do something else, love. See ya. But yeah, <laughs> the first few episodes seem to be hit with production issues, mm. which maybe is why series, series two is not great. My fa- my fondest favorite. Yeah. Um, the canine prop used right at the end is the original prop from the nineteen seventies. Oh, that's fun. Um, Finch's shooty dog thing line um, mm-hmm. is a very similar dialogue pattern to uh, what the characters use in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So that's a little reference to him being uh-huh. Giles and Buffy, which is fun. <laughs> um, David Tent wore a fake moustache to get a genuine reaction from Billy Piper and Elizabeth Sladen when they were laughing at the Doctor at his expense. <laughs> oh, okay, um, yeah, that makes so sense. So his, his, like, interjects were kind of filmed yeah. later, because that, yeah, yeah. that was one take wonder. Mm-hmm. That was all, that was the only um, take they shot. Oh. Uh, the Quillotanes were originally called Quillians, but then they found out that name was trademarked for some reason. Hmm. Um, this isn't so much a fun fact as a sad fact, but okay. um, this episode was taken off air in Australia after a student detonated a bomb in a classroom which killed five people, oh. and the student's name was Ken. So the oh, line no. saying Kenny, Kenny blew, blew up, up the school, the school. <laughs> it was oh, Kenny, no. didn't quite um, bode well there, oh, so dear. they had to take it off air, um, which is just unfortunate, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, and then in footage that was cut from the episode, um, after Milo answers all his questions, Milo abs- um, actually collapses. And he was taken oh. to a nurse who then ate him, which is why that teacher was then like, Kenny oh, has Milo me. has failed me. Yeah, Kenny. Yeah, so Milo has failed me. He's chronically dead. Um, oh, okay. Which would have been fun to see, I guess. <laughs> would it? But no. Uh, Mickey originally didn't appear in this episode, so it's kind of bizarre. That would have been a shame. <laughs> yeah, what a shame that would have been. Mm. Um, considering he like joins the team at the end, that's very weird that he wasn't in it early on. Um Sarah Jane was originally a recovering alcoholic in the original draft, but Elizabeth oh, Staten was like, you're not no doing thanks. that, take that out yeah. right now. And I think that was probably a wise move. Hmm. Um, oh, filming at the cafe was delayed because of drunk and disorderly public. <laughs> <laughs> I think the one, that must be like a, a Friday night. It's still open. Let's go and get some chips after a night out kind of place. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Um, <laughs> And this episode seems to ignore the fact that Sarah Jane actually met the f- the fifth Doctor in the Five Doctors, so she knew he survived, and she does remember that encounter. She didn't lose her memories, so it's fine. Just Shh. just forget about it. Um, and then Elizabeth said originally rejected um, the request to be in this episode, but then she realised how um, important her role would be. She thought she'd just be like a side character. Yeah. Um, and then she said, "Oh, all right then." And I think okay. that ended up working fairly well for her. So I think that was a yeah, good decision. Definitely. So there you go. Fun uh, facts galore, apart from um, the bomb one. Yeah, maybe not that one. Oh, God, that's a horrible coincidence. It's awful, yeah. Um, yeah, I, like I said before, if Sarah Jane wasn't in this, I I just think it would have been a run-of-the-mill standard yeah. filler episode, really. Yeah. Um, with that being said, what are you giving it out of 10? I went for 8.5. Because, again, a big chunk of that is... Sarah Jane, the nostalgia behind it. Otherwise, it probably would have been like a six or a seven kind of standard run of the mill. Yeah, I think mine, uh, I'm going to go with an eight, I think. Um, I was almost thought it was a 0. 0.5. I 
Um, but I think the Rose versus Sarah Jane sort of knocks it down a little bit for me. The fact that they and looking at it in a 2021 point of view, it's it feels very gross to have two women fighting over a man in a kids show. Mm. Um, but it is what it is, I guess. You know, it's along with the "you're so gay" line in 2005. You know, <laughs> some things don't last. Some things aren't. Mm. Uh, and with certain actors in this episode, some things don't last. Some things are not great. Um, Unfortunately, we'll have to skirt around him again. In just the... as he joins the TARDIS crew. Just as he joins the TARDIS crew, but at least he's going to leave oh, good. in three episodes' time. That's true. Um, and then come back if, a couple of times. If people aren't aware of the issues around Noel Clark, please, by all means, go and find the Guardian article online and uh, read about it. We'll try not to mention it too much because it's quite disgusting. Yes. Um, but unfortunately, he is here. And, and as I mentioned to some of my friends, you know, he does have one of the the best arcs in New Who, and unfortunately that's slightly tainted now. Um, but it's it's it a sad will separate fact, a character. Yeah, we'll have to we'll, what else we'll can try we do? our best. Yeah, it's it's not like we can digitally remove him and put in someone else. We're and not... plus, we ripped into Mickey enough in series one. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Unfortunately, now we have to praise him after he comes out of being a bad person. We have to praise yeah, the character. But we're going to praise the character, not the actor. Not the actor. Yeah, that's fair. Um, but yeah, that's it now. Uh, We'll be back next week with The Girl in the Fireplace, which um, I also remember quite liking at the time. Um, mm. What are your sort of thoughts on it? I know it's like a big fan favourite. Mm. Um, I don't remember liking it as much as the fandom did. I thought it was fine. I enjoyed it. But I just, I don't like the Doctor falling in love nonsense. I never I never do enjoy it. Oh, um, but I am interested in approaching it again this time the um, jump scare with the clockwork thing under the bed gets me every single time <laughs> um and i do think they're really creepy villains i love that yeah um definitely. so i'm excited i think i'm gonna really enjoy it this time around uh, yeah. I, I haven't seen it in years yeah it seems for a lot of these i've not seen them in ages it feels like i'm watching them for the first time for a while but i do i have seen them recently it's not like i and them. yeah it is also unfair as well because if I'm like rewatching Doctor Who, I'm like, get to the side men, get to the side men. I want to <laughs> yeah. skip this one, get to the yeah. side men, please. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, the, that the, that two part is coming up. Um, yeah. And then obviously, the series finale. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see how, how Girl in the Fireplace holds up. Um, I think it's very CGI light as well. Um, because obviously, the, yeah. the clockwork people are very practical effect based. Um, so, and I'll also be interested to see how the TARDIS team gets along. Um, and how actually creepy it was because I remember thinking at the time it was a bit creepy with obviously what's turned out to happen on board the ship. Um, yeah, I think yeah. if there's going to be any like major difference between what I think of the episode now compared to how I actually feel when I watch it, I think it's going to be this one. Oh, you don't think it will be um, Idiot's Lantern? You don't think it'll be Love and Monsters? Oh my god, <laughs> we've still got we've still got Idiot's Lantern, Love and Monsters, and Fear Her to come. Yeah. Yay! Yay! But it's okay. Then we're in series three with the Lazarus experiment. Yay! <laughs> and forty-two. I like forty-two. Oh, fair enough. Chris, Christian. Lazarus experiment. Less. I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> um, yeah, I think there's less in series, less duds in series three than there is series two. Spe yeah, from um, well, I like forty-two anyway, but certainly Human Nature onwards, it's just very good. Yeah, because that's what the two part. Then it's. Is it then 42 and then Utopia or is it straight into Utopia? No, it's Utopia, then it was, um, no, it was 42, then it's the two-parter, then it's Blink, then it's Utopia. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. So from Human finale. Nature all the way to the finale, I think it's excellent. <laughs> yeah, well, I I'm not a big fan of Last of Tunnels, but... How dare you? I'm sorry, okay? <laughs> it has the great musical number in it that we need to make sure we watch the bit with the musical number in it. Oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, well, uh, like, yeah, I have my DVD, it'll be in there, it's fine. Yeah, well, apparently, um, and this is skipping miles ahead, but apparently they, the, one of the BBCs, like, when they were sh shipping out to sell to other countries, um, they removed that scene because of licensing issues or something like that. And so that became the wildly used mm. one, along with apparently Francine not threatening to shoot the master which oh, I thought was always in it, but apparently that was removed in some versions. Which is one of her best moments. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm hoping that I'm going to get to that part on the Series 3 Steelbook and it'll be like, yeah, it's all still here and I'll be able to enjoy it in its 56 Oh, Matthew glory. is not. <sighs> I know. We'll just have to find a YouTube clip and say, look, look, it is, go and find it. Just don't... <laughs> I can't decide. Oh, but, uh, oh, what a great scene. 
but yes, we're, we're jumping miles ahead here. That'll take ages to get to. Um, but yes, yeah, that's like this, 20 weeks away. Yeah, uh, this was School More. Reunion, um, probably one of uh, our better rated episodes. Um, and yeah, we both pretty much enjoyed it. Obviously, go ahead and watch the episode if you've not seen it before. Um, by all means, leave a comment to see what uh, to let us know what you thought of the episode. Um, and yeah, we'll see you next week for Go in the Fireplace. Bye. Bye.